Hey everybody, it is April 17th and today we are going to celebrate National Cheese Ball Day. So when I think of cheese ball, uh, some different images might pop up to your mind depending on who you are, your past history, experiences, etc. So when I say cheese ball, what comes to your mind? Is it uh, the deep fried great cheese ball that you can buy at a restaurant as a side, at the county fair, at the FFA food stand, um, that just like you look forward to every year, um, and just those great ooey gooey cheese balls? Um, or is it the puff cheese balls that you know you can buy in the store in one of those big clear boxes um, that are just super, super tasty and you just keep wanting to eat them? Or is it the homemade cheese ball with uh, some cream cheese um, you know, that you can dip your crackers in and really enjoy? Okay, so regardless of what type of cheese ball you want to celebrate today, um, we're going to talk about the root of all of them, which is cheese. So a uh, little bit about the history of cheese first, and then we're actually going to make some fresh mozzarella today. So the word cheese is derived from an early word quat, um, which means to ferment or to sour. So this does not mean that uh, in order to make cheese, you just get to let milk sit out, um, let it go sour, and then that creates cheese. It's a little more complicated process than that. So we have to first understand the breakdown of milk. So when you think about what milk is made out of, it is made out of 88% water, 4% fat, 3% protein, and then 5% lactose and minerals. So that is what milk is made out of in general. Now, in order to make cheese, we have to focus in and try to get one of those specific items, um, a soluble protein, so soluble meaning being able to dissolve in water, um, casein. So that is the protein that we're looking for. So in order to make cheese, there are three steps we have to follow. The first one is the milk does need to go sour or be acidified. So in order to do that, again, it's not just sitting it out and letting it get to room temperature and go bad. We actually are going to add a starter bacteria to start making that ha process happen. Um, in our case today, we are going to be using citric acid because again, going sour, um, that similar process is acidifying the milk. Uh, step number two in the cheese making process is curdling. So this um, is aided by the enzymes that are going to be interacting with this process and it can either be done by animal or plant-based rennet. And we're going to get into the definition of rennet and how that was first discovered later on. Uh, but rennet is actually an ingredient you would also buy from the store and add to your cheese making process. So when the rennet does its job and is added in, um, you're going to see the milk and this process start to change, right? You're gonna start to get um, these creamy lumps on top of the liquid floating around, and that would be the creamy lumps being the curds um, sitting in the whey. So you've probably heard those terms before, curds and whey. Um, really what that whey is, okay, that's not the process or the part we're gonna take to make the cheese, but that whey is also containing protein, uh, lactose, vitamins, and minerals. So it's also still very healthy and can get made into a lot of other deals as well. The third and final process of this cheese making is taking out those curds and then having it go through a specific process or aging it and then doing that in different ways in order to come up with different types of cheeses. So some of them are much more complex. Some of them are very simple. One example of a very easy, it's uh, not aged at all, would just be cottage cheese. Okay, That is actually uh, what a lot of people think about when they're thinking of curds and whey because it's not just a solid block of cheese. Uh, so today we're not going to make cottage cheese. Uh, we're going to make some fresh mozzarella. Um, this is kind of known as the um, beginner's way of making cheeses. It's very simple. It's going to be about a 30 minute process total. Um, for this video's sake, I'm going to also speed it up a little bit, but um, we are going to head over into the kitchen and actually um, be making some cheese and showing you that process and then giving you a little information about cheese along the way. So I'm going to head to the kitchen and get the supplies and we'll I catch up with you. I am in my kitchen ready to go. We're going to start making cheese. First thing I want to do is go through you the three main ingredients that are a little, some of them are a little unique that you're going to need to make at least fresh mozzarella cheese. There are also tons of cheese recipes. So if you're going with another one, may, ingredients may vary a little bit. But what we are going to use today, use today are these three. The first one is just a gallon of milk. Now I chose here a 2%. 
Um, it just depends on the type of cheese you want, uh, what is suggested. Lots of people really like whole milk. They think it gives it a lot more flavor. A skim milk may not give you as much of a flavor of a milk, but it would be considered maybe a little bit healthier of a cheese, not quite as fatty. So decision is up to you. They should all work, or at least um, with some varying differences, but the main thing with milk is to make sure that it is not ultra pasteurized. That's taking a lot of the enzymes out that we're gonna need to make uh, cheese. So just as long as it doesn't say ultra pasteurized, you should be good to go. The next ingredient that you're going to need that you pro might not have in your kitchen right away is citric acid. So this is uh, my citric acid. It can be found at a normal grocery store. It's not that uncommon to buy, but you just don't need it for a whole lot of recipes. What the citric acid is going to do is help with that first step of the cheese making, which is turning the milk sour or bringing acidity to it. So bringing in citric acid is a great way to add that acidity. So we are going to be dissolving this in water first and then adding it to the milk mixture to turn that a little bit sour. The third and final ingredient, which is also a little bit unique, is going to be rennet tablets. So that is what these look like. Um, it just comes in a pack of eight. Again, not something you would normally just pick up at a grocery store, but it is there. So what this is, is just eight tablets. There is also a liquid form that you could get they both work the same way. And that is going to be helping us with the step two of cheese making and curdling the cheese by activating enzymes. So we are gonna get started. First step is actually warming up our milk. So I'm gonna adjust the camera right here. We got our pot on our stove with um, the thermometer in it. Again, if you have a thermometer, make sure that it's not touching directly the bottom of the pot. Instead, we want it hovering a little bit to truly get the correct temperature of the milk. Our goal is to hit 88 degrees. Now I'm going to suggest putting this on low uh, or maybe medium low as a heat to heat that up. It will turn faster than you think. Again, we're not boiling it. Okay. So don't wait for it to boil and then come to it. We're just going to hit that 88 degrees. So I'm going to pour in the milk. One gallon is quite a long time. <laughs> Going. You're gonna need a pretty big pot, probably about like a five quart at least, uh, to make sure that it can hold the gallon of milk. Okay, it might foam a little bit at the top, especially since we just mixed that in. I splattered around accidentally a bit, so I uh, cleaned that up as well. I have the thermometer in, in, a, in the center, and I am turning it on to a low heat to get going. So my guess right here, it's yeah, dialing back to pretty much what that refrigerator temperature was. Um, so we're adjusting that. So as this is slowly coming to 88 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm going to get together the next step. So um, I'm going to bring it up here and show you. We are going to be dissolving in this citric acid. So as I open up this container, I'm going to bring this over. We have right here some water that we're going to dissolve ready right into, and we are going to put one and a fourth teaspoons into, I just want to make sure I say it right, a half a cup of cool water. So I'm just going to scoop this up, make sure to just make it level to get an accurate measurement. I already have the correct amount of water in there. So we have one teaspoon and a fourth a teaspoon that we have put in. I'm going to set the citric acid aside and we're just going to dissolve this in there. So just do the best. You don't have to go crazy. It'll dissolve pretty easily. You just got to give it a couple moments. Okay, and again, the citric acid that once the milk reaches 88 degrees, we're going to pour in and stir. Um, this is what's going to acidify the milk and kind of make it turn sour so it's ready to make cheese. So this is all dissolved in, and I'm going to set that aside to use. The next thing we have to get ready, it looks like our milk hasn't gotten too warmed up yet so we just got to give it a little bit of time uh is we're going to get our rennet tablets ready so what this one is going to be again the tablets i can show you come in at least when you buy the tablet form again liquid will look a little differently just come in packets and just you take one out at a time and use it so uh, what we're going to do and what this recipe calls for is dissolving a half a rennet tablet into a fourth a cup of water. So 
as I took it out, this is the half rennet tablet. There's divides in it, it's really easy to cut, but I'm going to put it into the fourth a cup of cool water um, and we're gonna let it dissolve. It'll dissolve again quite easily. Um, this one you just gotta give a couple moments as well. It's already halfway gone. And it looks like our temperature of our milk is, I don't know, probably up to 50 now. So we still got a little ways to go, but it'll go pretty fast. So this looks like it is completely dissolved. So we're gonna set that aside. Okay, so I'm gonna tilt this down just so we can start to see that aspect. So what we are going to do, um, looks like we're getting up more towards 55 range on that. Um, the first thing we're going to do once it hits that 80 to 8 degrees is add the citric acid mix that we just made. Because again, that first step that we have to do is acidify the milk. Then we're going to stir it in continuously, um, give it a couple moments to rest, then pour in our rennet tablet mix. Now, the rennet tablet's going to do again that second process to the milk, which is to curdle it. You might be curious as to, sorry, just keep looking at the temperature there to make sure we don't go over. That is a very important fact. The rennet tablets do curdle the milk. Now you may be asking, how do we know rennet tablets do that? Or why do they do that? And what's the history behind that? It's a very interesting story. Um, the rennet process, um, what we're using in the rennet tablets is actually plant-based, but historically and still currently, Rennet can also be animal-based. So that leads to the history of how we figured out about rennet and the concept of curdling milk and activating those enzymes in order to do it. So historically, they believe that this cheese-making process was first kind of discovered um, around the time that sheep and then for sure when cattle were domesticated. So that's a very, very, very long time ago. What happened is when they ended up harvesting the sheep or cow, whatever animal it may be that was a ruminant animal, which means it has four stomachs. If you've ever taken my animal science class, we've definitely gone into depth about those. They all do a different process, but a ruminant animal, which includes sheep and cattle. The easy way to identify those animals is they're the ones that are eating grass outside or hay, and they're able to digest it, okay? Horses are the unique example. They are not a ruminant, so it would not work for them. But when they harvested an animal, just like we do now, we want to use every part of the animal or figure out a purpose for it. So we don't use the stomach for this now, but stomachs in historically were a really good way to store liquids. So imagine it's a stomach. Uh, it's going to be leak proof. It's not like there's a hole punctured in your stomach. And so we're going to insert some milk in it, or it could be water, whatever type of liquid, maybe juice you wanted to store. Um, just hang it up and it worked really good or especially for traveling um, and delivering different uh, liquids and just that transport of things. So they ended up putting those mixtures in it. Now refrigeration didn't exist yet so it was really hot you know the temperature is going to go up meaning the milk is probably going to start to sour okay in that rennet stomach. Now because it was in the stomach a ruminant animal's stomach naturally produces the substance rennet. So as that was happening, the milk naturally curdled. I can't imagine that thought along that first person that noticed, hey, I had my milk stored in there. I want to go for a fresh drink. And now I got this curdled mess. Okay. I also probably really don't want to be that first person that ever tested it and tried to figure out if it was actually safe to eat. It is safe to eat, but... Yeah, no, I would not have wanted to be that first person. So that is a little bit about the history of how we learned about rennet. So, okay, so it looks like we just hit our 88 degree mark. So I turned down the heat a little bit more to make sure it does not go over. And we're going to pour in our uh, citric acid mix and then stir it in quite well. Just pouring it in. So as of now, like all this was, was just warm milk. So we're just giving it a good stir, making sure it all gets mixed in together. As I look, I'm going to take it off the heat because it looks like we were still not quite steadying off. But that is okay. We're just going to let it off. And I'm probably actually now going to set it just off the heat on a hot pad that I got here. 
Okay, so now that is off. We have it mixed in. I'm going to take off my thermometer because after we add the rennet tablet uh, dissolved mixture, we're going to have to let it set for a while. So we're just giving that a moment to uh, just rest. I have the stove turned off. We don't have to worry about that anymore. It is all mixed in. And now we have our, again, uh, rennet tablet mix here. So this is a half a tablet of rennet into a fourth of cup of water dissolved. Um, and all this is going to do now that this is added in. So this milk currently is turning sour by having that acid um, just break into it. You can kind of look, I'll try to bring it this way and show you if you can see. Um, it's gonna be kind of hard to see on that video, but it still looks pretty normal, but you can see a little bit of just um, stuff happening. You can tell it's not quite the way it should be, uh, which is acidifying, it's kind of souring. Uh, so now we're going to add in our rennet mix as well. Just pour it right on in. And then again, we're going to stir well into it. So we wanna make sure again that that gets mixed in very well so that that rennet can get and activate the enzymes along the whole entire process and everywhere in the pot. And again, this is off the heat right now, so we are not worrying about it going overheat. Again, we wanted that good, just warm 88 degrees, not getting too hot. Okay, so that is mixed in there. Um, again, I'll show you an up close, but really there's nothing new. Um, there we go. It's just a pot of warm milk. The rennet tablet is mixed in there and dissolved. Now it's going to start the curdling process, but this one does take time. So I am going to let it sit, not disturbed at all. We're just going to leave it alone for up to one to two hours. So okay, we'll everyone, we are back. It has been two hours and the cheese is looking good. The curds have formed. So to take a look here, um, this is our pot right here. And to figure out if the if it is ready, um, we do what's called a clean break test. So we take our finger, make sure it's clean, press lightly down in the middle. And as we lift up, if we have nothing on our fingers and it looks like it's formed, then we are good to go. So what we are going to do now is cut the curd. So I'm gonna to try to hold the camera in a way that you're gonna be easily uh, see this. Uh, but we are going to um, use the knife and go straight down into it and then go at a 45 degree angle, lift back up and do a couple uh, parallel to that as well. Okay, so it doesn't take much. Keep going here. Once we've hit this point, we are going to turn the pot um, about a quarter of a way and we're gonna go again. So we're gonna continue this process four times uh, to cut the curds into the sections that we need. And this will leave about um, a half an inch cube all the way around. Okay, and there we go. We have cut all of the curds. And now what we are going to do is put them back onto the stove. We now have to reheat them again for a little bit. Um, our goal is to be at 108 degrees. Uh, stirring occasionally. You don't want the curds to be clumped together at this point. You want to make sure the heat is stirring through and you also don't want them to settle at the bottom. And we need to do that process for 30 minutes, stirring every five minutes. So I will check back when we are the done. The cheese has been now sitting at 108 degrees for about 30, 35 minutes. What this uh, really did was kind of just condense it down, get to break up. So I will show you what it looks like um, now, as I stir, um, so as I come through and stir, I'm getting a lot more of the, oops, excuse me, get my camera out of the way, there we go, um, to all the curds that are happening. So now what we are going to do, you can choose to dump it all out at once um, into a strainer type deal. Um, I am going to use um, just a strainer and get all of the um, curds out. And then what I'm doing, let me just show you, is I have in here our strainer. I have some cheesecloth on top of it just because our uh, strainer holes are a little bit big. Um, and then I do have it in a separate container instead of just the sink. Reason being, I am planning to keep all of the whey um, and then end up making it into something else. So this could be actually made into ricotta cheese. 
Um, I could use it as a stock for the base of a soup. Um, I could put it into a, a smoothie mix. There's a lots of different things that you can do with that. So if you want to, like, don't waste the whey, turn it into something else as well. We have now separated all of the curd and whey. Um, and again, don't throw away the whey. Uh, we are going to reuse it for something else. I think I'm going to make ricotta cheese. Um, here are the curds as you take a look in there. Um, all broken in and now what we are going to do is add one teaspoon of salt and that's going to give it a lot of the flavor because right now if you taste it it's cheese but it's not going to taste very good then we are going to microwave for a little bit uh, mix it together microwave a little bit more and those exact times will be in the directions but it's I believe 45 seconds and then 20 seconds and then we are going to stretch it out and make our final thing and we are finally back to the last section I want to show you what my cheese looks like, but before that, a couple tips that I just learned during that process. Make sure that when you uh, separate your curds in a way that you let your curds sit for quite a long time and drain completely as much as they can, okay? If you get a little uh, anxious um, and overexcited and then really start trying to knead that and getting stretched, it's going to be a much more harder much longer process for you uh, to get all those juices out. So this is what we have. Um, right now as my block of cheese um, and you can tell this is again fresh mozzarella uh, so it's gonna have a little bit of stringiness to it when it is right like that um, warm so this is just warm to the touch right now um, and then just keep going and just kind of knead it out and stretch it and then it just kind of rips like that so last step is forming this into a ball and then setting it in a salt water bath um, to sit overnight and then it will be ready to eat tomorrow. So I'm just kind of stretching this into a ball, um, right looking like that. It looks just like fresh mozzarella um, that you could buy at the store, so that's exciting. So I'm gonna put this in my water bath, I'm gonna set it in the fridge overnight and have a great snack tomorrow. So here's the challenge for you on National Cheese Ball Day. Have some cheese balls, whether that be going to a restaurant, buying some um, that are fried, making your own that are fried, uh, making a cheese ball with the cream cheese and dipping crackers into it, finding a recipe that you like, or actually making homemade cheese. Guys, if I can do it, anyone can do it. Now, you might have some bumps along the road. I didn't kind of let this slip in the video earlier. I had my first attempt making cheese while recording this and it did not go well. Uh, I didn't get any curds to form, so I had to start completely over again. So it is a process sometimes. Fresh mozzarella is one of the easiest ones. You can also look up, but there's so many other recipes, okay? The recipe that I ended up using, and this is what uh, turned out from it, is when I bought the rennet tablets, there was actually a piece of paper inside that had a lot of different recipes, one of them for moz American mozzarella. So that is the one I took. Um, it did work great. I would say the whole entire process probably took three to four hours, but again, it's um, leaving it there, just resting for one to two hours so you didn't have to babysit it. You could just let it go. So that is what I challenge you to do. Uh, make your own cheese, find a good recipe, uh, share out what you made, um, and even if you messed up, just share what happened. Um, I learned a lot through this process, and I hope that you do as well. Have a great National Cheese Day, guys.